Uh, good morning, guys. People, world, whoever, wherever. Sup. Got a couple of projects I need to do today. <sighs> First gen Dodge Cummins are killing me. Not really, but. Anyways, my kid's been complaining about the noise on his <coughs> on his first gen. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, yeah, so his first gen, he's been complaining about a, a whining, whistling noise, thinking it's his transmission, wheel bearing, uh, turbo, who knows, a boost leak or something. Anyways, I was like, well, you're just going to have to drive it because... You know, we were checking all the fittings around the turbo. I was looking for like exhaust, like soot, and uh, couldn't find any soot or anything. So, uh, yesterday he pulls in and he's like, hey, listen to the truck. And we pulled into the, the gate area. He was like, hey, listen to the truck. And he started pulling forward. And uh, I heard like a screaking noise. <clears throat> like a so I was like alright maybe it's the brakes <clears throat> um anyways but it's all new brakes so everything basically is new on this truck except for rear brakes so I was like alright so we jacked at the front we checked all the wheel bearings checked all the suspension ball joints everything was good Front, the front is solid on this truck and then I was like alright we'll jack up the back <clears throat> so we jacked up the back or he jacked up the back and I started uh, trying to move the wheel, but since it's limited slip, it won't spin the wheel unless you put it in neutral. Um, unless you, like, yank on it hard. So I started yanking on it hard, like, back and forth, like, like rocking it. And I heard, like, kum, 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 like, real, a lot of excessive play. Anyways, and uh, crawled under the truck to check the U-joints. Ouch! Ugh. Check the U joints in here, and I was like, "Oh, that's good, that's good." And I was like, "Oh, whole bearings hanging out." So this is why we have a lot of, I guess you could say, well, what it is is it's tranny fluid, because the tranny fluid is leaking right there. The tranny fluid's leaking out of the seal because. The uh, yoke's not in there all the way, the slip yoke. So it's hanging out because, if you can see it this way, anyways, this bearing is too far this way. So, oh, jeez, getting too old for this crap. Anyways, uh, yeah, so that's the project. I know we just I just changed it on that truck, um, and it was hard to find. The part number wasn't right. What what O'Reilly's and what Vatozone had in their computer system wasn't right. It was like a, an inch and three eighths inside diameter, and this needs to be like two inch. So what I'm gonna do? Because I threw all the old one away, the old one from that truck. I threw that one away. So what we're going to do is take it apart and then bring it in with us so we can match it up. And hopefully we get a cool guy like we had last time at Vato Zone, Vato Zone, who uh, actually went back and looked up other part numbers for us. He actually did his job, um, which was really cool. So uh, we're going to go to CarQuest first because I know the guy at CarQuest. He's my neighbor. Um, I just don't like going to car quests, they're expensive, but, I mean, whatever, we're not, I don't want to skimp out on parts on his truck, um, even though we bought a lot of parts from Vatozone, but they were all Moog, and, you know, they were higher-end parts that we were able to get online from AutoZone, but anyways, so that's going to be the project today, uh, trying to get this thing fixed. With a kid, so he doesn't break down or do more damage. So, good thing he uh, caught it. Good thing he's listening to his vehicle instead of listening to the radio and listening to who knows what else. So, it's good on him. At least he's 
At least he's listening to his vehicle. Anyways, he's got the drive shaft out. There he goes, the bearing. The bearing's pretty stiff, um, which I think that's why it probably got hot, locked up, and then spun all inside this. Um, anyways, so now I'm gonna use this tool here. Wrap this piece here around there, then go out to the press, press it out, and then uh, go to the Vato Zone or probably go to O'Reilly's because when I laid down to look at my wife's car, I noticed a big puddle. Anyways, it's piece back in there is leaking. I just replaced it. A little selector, heater control selector valve is leaking. It's leaking on the bottom. So anyways, probably go to O'Reilly's because that's where I got that. But if I'm going to be in here, I think I'm going to do this motor mount again. I got that from O'Reilly's too. And uh, their tolerances from Honda are just, just off. They're not on par. So I'm going to take the motor mount off, I'm going to take that off, and I'm going to take this off. Here, go to O'Reilly's, and uh, hopefully they'll be able to match everything up. And uh, yeah, so all you need back here is a 8mm or 5 sixteenths. I just use this little breaker bar with an 8mm on it. Um, or little wrenches, it's little tiny bolts. Uh, slid the drive shaft out. You have to undo the, the bolt carrier, the hanger. That's right in here somewhere. All right there. It's a uh, 11 sixteenths uh, nut and then a 5 eighths bolt. That's the wrench sizes. It's about a, uh, probably a 3 eighths inch. 3 8 inch bolt, but it's a uh, 11 16 socket to take it off. I'll get a little catch pan right there to catch any fluid if it leaks, but nothing's coming out. Um, but yeah. So anyways, I'm gonna go to the back here, to the barn and press that out. Anyways, so... I'll go do all that real quick, and uh, and I'm gonna tear this car apart too. So, and the wing kicked up, kicked in. Uh, got the kids' truck done. Uh, we changed the, uh, the carrier drive side drive shaft hanger bearing or carrier bearing, whatever the heck you want to call it. Oh, right there. So I had to press the. Pulled one off, pressed the new one on, got it all in, got it all tight, oh, almost took a face plant. Um, did that, uh, and then him and the wife ended up rotating, rotating the tires on his truck. Her car, I ended up uh, sea foaming, putting sea foam in the intake. I uh, had to change the heater control valve and the motor mount for the third, that's the third motor mount on her car. Um, getting it from O'Reilly's. And the guy at O'Reilly's, when we went there to get the heater control and the uh, uh, motor mount, uh, I told him, I let him know that it was the third, third motor mount we've gotten from them uh, under warranty. Because when you shake it, it sounded like, uh, I don't know, it sounded like something was inside of it, just clunking around. Um, they're hydraulic filled and a vacuum actuated, so they got the vacuum to hold it, and they're hydraulic filled supposedly. Um, but that one, that one sounded hollow, it sounded like someone put like a dime or a nickel in it, and it just clunk, clunk, clunk when you shake it. Anyway, so he said that if this one doesn't work or if something happens to this one we can just bring it back get our money back and then I'll just have to go buy one from Honda 
So, we started the car, still does the same thing. So, uh, probably one of these days, I don't know when. One of these days I'll take it out and uh, go bring it back. I'll probably go to Honda, buy a Honda one first, and then uh, bring it back to them. Anyways, for now the truck is done. Her car's done. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's all done. Did the seafoam stuff. Mm, that's pretty much it. Changed the oil in my air compressor and the compressor itself. Uh, I ended up using uh, 520. No, I didn't use that. I used 530, full synthetic. If it'll show. 530. Full synthetic uh, on it uh, just because I wanted to run full synthetic on it because when I got the air compressor from the guy, I got overexcited, figured it had oil in it, and uh, it didn't have oil in it. So when you first fire it up, it goes clunk, clunk, clunk. Anyways, probably has a rod knock, but um, ended up fixing the tailgate on that Dodge. I just don't really want to go out there. It's it's too windy. But anyways, I'll just show you anyways. Don't mind the wind. Sorry for the wind. But anyways. So the rods that go from here to here, there's little arms that are on this. The arms are actually bent and twisted. So when you would pull the handle, when you would pull the handle, because they were basically already pulled it couldn't pull it far enough it does like a little scissor thing but anyways so I got that all fixed let me get out of the wind apparently that hurricane's hitting us Southern California but anyways so that's gonna be it for this video guys uh, I'm done I'm over it I'm over the day driving around that carrier bearing was the wrong carrier bearing he had to I had to find it online, found it, they, they actually have the right one for advanced auto parts. It's uh, the diameter is 1 and 9 16 and the only one that VatoZone, O'Reilly's, CarQuest, and another place show, it's 1 and 3 8 that's wrong, it needs to be 1 and 9 16 But anyways, so we did some cross-referencing numbers, he called a bunch of people, and he ended up having the part on the shelf. Um, yeah, so ended up working out. This is a different guy from O'Reilly, so. Uh, but yeah, so. Anyways, guys, that's going to be it. Uh, make sure you guys like. Make sure you guys comment below if you guys see anything. Got any advice for me or whatever. Uh, just let me know. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Do what you guys do. Later.